Hey guys, I thought of a uh, very interesting subject and it's compare the pair. Compare the pair. Well, what we're comparing is the 1KD and the 1GD. That's the pair we're going to compare. Doesn't really matter what's in this picture, it's just um, something we're looking at while I speak to you and explain to you some of the differences between, not really just between the 1KD and the 1GD, that's, so that's the, you know, the 3 litre common rail diesel engine, the 1KD, you know, it's the 3 litre, it's been around since 05 in the Hiluxes and um, up until 2015 and then the 1GD came out, that's a 2.8 litre. In theory, the main differences we know about that engine are, and we haven't looked into them heavily yet, but just going off a few of the basic differences, uh, people seem to think they're a lot quieter, and they are, and that would be, you know, it's not just because it's a new engine or a new design, I mean, that helps a little bit, but one of the biggest things is it's got hydraulic lifters, so there's no, so pros and cons of all this, so you've got to follow to the end to understand whether it's a positive or a negative, if you like, or a bit of both. So, hydraulic lifters, right? So there's no, they're not adjustable. You can't adjust them, it's all done hydraulically. So when they're both cold and hot, you've got, I suppose, a very good valve clearance, and therefore the, um, the engine's pretty quiet. So, on a positive note, no maintenance. So you don't have to go in every 40,000 Ks, which you don't anyway, but by the book, every 40,000 Ks with these engines, the 1KD, you've got to go in, do the big job, risk contamination, and check your valve clearances, right? So you don't have to do that, so that's good. So in the short term, maintenance cost should be lower, the engine will be quieter, okay? The other positive, would seem positive is, it doesn't have a timing belt. On this engine, there's a timing belt in behind that cover there. The cost is around 80 or 90 dollars from a Toyota dealer in Australia. Not a big deal, and you can change it without changing anything else. So not a big deal. I've done a video on that. It may not be visible on YouTube. A lot of the videos, the longer detailed ones, are in our um, Facebook group 4 Before Diesel VIPs, which is reserved for clients, people who have purchased the um, injector kit or other parts like the front wheel bearings for the Prados or the timing belt kit, which is kind of what we're talking about. But anyway, basically, yeah, timing belt. So, you know, no timing belt on the 1GD. So, wow, every 150,000 Ks, you don't have to go and change that timing belt. That would seem like less maintenance and be a good thing. So in the short term, say 200,000 Ks, probably may not have any problems with valve clearances or need to check or repair anything. Same deal with the timing belt. So that's awesome. <clears throat> the only problem with these two systems, timing chains and, you know, timing chain guides and things, engines typically sometimes have problems. Not always. And they do wear. It's another wear. It's a chain in the engine. You know, it's lubricated by oil and there's guides that also wear. How long are they going to last? Some people have come up with different figures. We're not going to bother re-quoting any of those because as far as I'm concerned, what people think things are going to last and what the manufacturer says they're going to last and what actually happens are two different things. They could last a lot longer or they could last a lot less. So depending how long those timing chains and guides last and those hydraulic lifters, and we've already heard a whisper of some problems with timing chains and stuff like that in the 1GD engine, and if that happens prematurely at, you know, 100,000 Ks, more or less, and you've got to do major repairs to fix that, then it wasn't such a good option, was it? With the old 1KD, it's a very solid engine. We actually, I won't call it love, but yeah, we will. We love these engines. They're very solid engines. What you've got to remember, it's just a four-cylinder, okay? So it's already, there's a, it's already being asked a lot of running a big four-wheel drive, especially with all the extra weight and modifications, and then the towing that can be added onto that as well. Remember, it's just a little four-cylinder. We've done another video on that trying to explain. So, so that's pretty good, but there's always a weak point, and what the weak point, well, not necessarily a weak point or a problem, but something's got to give. And um, so in this case, we know with the 1KD, it is the piston that cracks. 
is the weak point. If you run it for long enough, hard enough, it may or may not happen anyway. And of course, if you've got wrong combustion caused by injectors that are worn and flogged, not working right, the other cause, common causes are chips, tunes, remaps, that sort of thing. But this is not about that. That's in other videos. So compare the pair, the 1KD and the 1GD. Well, so one's got the adjustable lifters that you supposedly got to check every 40,000 that we know you don't have to do that. You'll generally get away with checking those when you change your injectors and seats every, as we normally recommend, somewhere between 150 and 200,000 K is when you're going to need injectors, seats, and check the valve clearance, approximately every seven years. So was the 1GD really that better because it's quieter because of the valve lifters that might fail? Give it some time, they've only been out four years here. Um, that timing chain, that timing belt, you don't have to change. But you could change in about an hour. That cost 80 to 90 dollars, not a big deal. Let's say 300 bucks for a timing belt and the valve clearances that we know are gonna be okay. Those systems are very reliable. You've got a, a solid piece of steel lifter sitting over the top of a valve. It's not gonna go anywhere, it doesn't wear. Um, obviously the valve seats are what wears and I'd put it out there that they wouldn't wear. If you didn't have a catch can and didn't and you just allowed the oil to go through the engine and provide that little bit of lubrication. If you didn't have exhaust gas recirculation, that's the soot going through your intake, unfiltered, dry and abrasive while the engine's new because there's less blow-by, um, then you may have not ever had any problems with wear of the valve seats, and you may never. And we see a lot of engines at hundreds of thousands of Ks that never need valve adjustment. So what's really better is what I'm asking you. Have a think of that. We're comparing the pair. There's a lot of water under the bridge with the 1KD. The 1GD is going to be a bit longer yet. Uh, let's just see how it all goes. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, remember to subscribe. Turn the bell on for notifications for the next important information. And I've had quite a few ideas on videos today. It's a matter of remembering them till I've got time to make a video. Right now, I'm actually waiting to pick up my daughter from dancing. And we had a spare 10 minutes, so here we go. Compare the pair. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. Because a lot of people are thinking, do I buy a new 1GD? Do I update my new to the new Prado with a new engine? Or do I keep the 1KD? Well, we sort of say 1KD is the last of the best. And why do we say that? Well, it hasn't got a DPF, okay? It hasn't got a DPF. You're not going to have DPF problems if you haven't got one. That's a real positive. Tomming belts, cheap and easy to change. Valve clearances are pretty good. If you have a solution for your EGR, like that plate with a 7mm hole, thousands of people use successfully, that's going to reduce the soot going through by a lot. There's only going to be a minimal amount going through. And um, you're just not going to get that valve seat wear is what we see. You don't really need a catch can. The catch can just takes out the oil. The oil's not the problem. The oil may act as the glue for the soot, but the soot's the real problem. So once you take sort out that EGR system, whichever way you choose, if you choose to do so, um, then you're not going to have an issue. And the oil's there, and it kind of helps wash through. As the engine gets older, um, it helps wash through the intake. And that leads me on to an... I'm just going to touch on it quickly. We'll do another video on it. And that is... You know, a few people have said, oh, you know, I had a look in at my EGR and it's not too bad at, you know, two or 300,000 Ks, but it's really wet. Well, what, what happens is, guys, early days, all that, because the mix is even, the mix of oil and soot, they start to cake up quite early, quite often, not always. It varies widely what actually happens with these engines and the EGR and whether they cake up or not. Regardless of whether it cakes up or not, it's not a good thing sending soot through your engine. If it's not caked up, it's probably gone through your engine better slowly than all at once with the you know one of these chemical carbon clean things but anyway um, you know our position we don't believe they work well anyway but you can do your own research on that and have a think about it so what happens is with the EGR if you let it build up you know in the first hundred hundred fifty thousand k's and you haven't cleaned it or got a solution in place by the time you check it at three hundred thousand it's not looking too bad because it actually does then push it down through and it might look not bad on the EJ on the elbow, but it pushes it down through into the intake manifold. So it's actually further down in around where it can cause more problems later on. So it's really messy stuff. It's up to you what you want to do with that. I was just touching on that. I'll explain it in a bit more detail in another video. 
This one was compare the pair. This EGR system, we've got a solution for it. We know what works. At your choice, we know you can put a plate in for $10. It reduces the flow by heaps. The EGR system still works. At idle, you've still got 20-80%. It only takes a very small amount of inert gases to cool the combustion, which is the design of the system to reduce nitrogen oxides. So, your choice what you do there, okay? Shutting your EGR off completely or blanking it would definitely be illegal. I'm not here to be a lawyer and tell you what you're allowed to do or not. All I can tell you is, Physically, the plate with a 7mm hole works well. The EGR system still functions. And the way I read it, it's a grey area, whether it's legal or not. You'd have to argue that one with someone in court or whatever, you know. A, uh, a QC. Actually, I spoke to someone the other day. He's very good friends of a... Um, he was a QC, now he's the uh, Crown Prosecutor. Or Apron didn't get the name, the full details, but Crown, Crown Prosecutor. Maybe he would like to discuss with you whether it's legal or not but look like I said separate issue it works really well the point I'm trying to make is on this engine we've got a solution for the EGR because the EGR is an absolute mess we know we've got to replace our injectors about every seven or eight years because they're full DLC we know they're going to work really well so this is a good engine to stick with but if you want to buy a 1GD that's fine also because technology we're moving on it's at least 10 year newer engine it's going to have some um, upgrades, you know, not just about the valve clearances and the, and the, you know, the hydraulic lifters and the timing chain or whatever. It's not just that. There's other changes in the engine, of course. You know, the ports, the design, the intake. Everything's a bit different to get a little bit more power out of a few less cubes, which is all good. I mean, a smaller engine, as long as you're not pushing it too hard, it's going to be a little bit more environmentally friendly in theory, and hopefully it is. Not sure how well it's working out with the DPF, though, so... Again, in theory, DPFs are awesome because it's a filter that traps those particulates. It doesn't do anything for um, nitrogen oxide, I just want to have you know. Um, the catalytic converter will help with that. Um, it's still got EGR. It's a much bigger system, a bigger pipe. It's going to open more to meet stricter emissions and therefore probably cake up your intake. Well, I'm not looking at them yet. They're going to be starting to come out of warranty and we'll start seeing more of them soon. Um, but what I'm told from people that uh, that have taken cars to Toyota dealers and guys that work at Toyota dealers 10 times worse than a 1KD. That intake just cakes up and at three or 4,000 Ks where, you know, Toyota guys have seen them with problems early days and had a look in there and it's just terrible. So beware of that. You're probably going to be shocked when you start seeing the stuff we, we when we start opening up and showing you those over the next couple of years. Be aware, be warned now. Um, it's not going to be nice. The point is, 1GD more EGR flow, DPF as well. In theory, a couple of things that are better that might not be better. And here we've got an engine that, you know, it's really clean and efficient, runs clean. EGR solution, um, no DPF. Well, you know, compare the pair. That's my comparison of the pair. I like both. If the uh, DPF was working reliably, that'd be even better, but unfortunately, no surprise there was going to be some issues because every other manufacturing including quality brands like Subaru and Mazda had problems for a long time they've been working on it for years I think that's why Toyota left it till the last minute till they had to do this okay and I'm sure they're doing everything they can to update software I don't think it's a faulty DPF the DPF itself would probably be okay it's just uh, the way the system's functioning software possibly a problem with that injector or something so anyway guys i hope that's got you thinking outside the square compare the pair have a nice day if you haven't already subscribe turn notifications on we've got another video coming your way